everyone and welcome to another rather sultry episode of Wild Your Garden. It's about 29 degrees today. Sweat is literally running off me from just being outside. It's that hot. But uh, anyway, I thought I would just stop by and do a little video for you. I'm in a garden actually in Surrey where I am due to do a pond in a couple of weeks. Uh, a wildlife pond, of course, uh, down at the bottom of the garden, which uh, you can see behind me, there's an existing water body, which will be clearing out. I'll be doing a time lapse of this pond, so keep your eye on the channel for that. However, I couldn't pass up on the opportunity to talk to you about a brilliant little wildflower that is widespread throughout the UK and Northern Europe, and that is, of course, this beautiful white clover. Now, hands up. How many of you out there have spent many an hour as a child on your hands and knees looking for a supposedly lucky four-leaf clover? I know I uh, certainly did. And um, I did find one once, actually. Not so, not so sure it brought me that much good fortune. However, um, it is a wonderful little wildflower and one that is literally just growing naturally. Now, look at that. That's all you have to do is not mow part of your lawn. I guarantee you, if you take one piece of advice from this video, don't mow a section of your lawn see what turns up most probably if it's an existing lawn that's been there for years and years um you'll probably find you have things like red clover self heal um, maybe some bird's foot trefoil white clover um, oxide daisies that sort of thing yarrow already in your lawn so put the mower away i know we've just had no mow may but uh keep it going why cut this when it looks like this because i tell you what it's absolutely covered in bumblebees today. These are mostly uh, buff-tailed bumblebees and uh, they are absolutely loving the nectar available from this white clover. It's just an absolute profusion of nectar for them at the moment. And if I stand up, you can see there's a bit of an overview. Look how good that looks, look how purposeful it looks, just by literally mowing the edge around the lawn so that you can gain access to from the top to the bottom of the garden. It looks purposeful. It looks like it's supposed to be there. And you walk into the garden and think that's deliberate. So in my ever, um, ever long challenges of trying to persuade people to not cut their grass, all of it at least, hopefully showing you this will give you the inspiration to not do so. And the rewards, look at it. You know, I mean, these bees are literally here in this lawn um, because this lawn hasn't been cut. And uh, yeah, the results speak for themselves. However, I must admit, you can probably see just uh, a smattering of um, clover uh, flowers that are flowering even shorter than the ones that have been let to grow. They're only maybe, you know, an inch, inch and a half high maximum. Um, but they are incredibly versatile at adapting to flowering on short, uh, short stalks, if you like. A bit like bird's foot trefoil and self heal. Um, because, of course, in the wider countryside, they will have been used for... Um, they will be used to a millennia of being grazed by cattle and sheep, so they have to flower very low down to avoid being eaten. Uh, so, um, yeah, doing very well at uh, surviving the blades of the mower here and still providing nectar. The bees have even been nectaring on these short, very short stems in the lawn itself. So <laughs> really, uh, really fantastic to see. But look at that. I mean, I know it's just white clover, but it's still absolutely stunning. So... It does flower from sort of May onwards, right the way through till October, if it's cut and, you know, semi-mown. Once it has um, actually, you know, sort of finished flowering, you can almost mow it again straight away. And then it will, of course, send up a fresh batch of new flowers, which in turn provide nectar for uh, lots and lots of bees and other insects. So it is brilliant. And if you can get some in your lawn, if you haven't got any, introduce some into your lawn, plant it in, uh, in a pot or a plug, and um, I promise you, you won't get fed up with the results. So um, yes, very versatile plant, white clover. It does come in the red form as well, um, which is equally as good. So if you can get some in your garden, I promise you it'll bring in lots and lots of bees and other insects. Thanks for watching guys. Please feel free to give a like to the video if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel and I'll be sure to bring you many more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in videos to come. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.